I'm sure you've seen these programs on TV where you know people are sent in in a survival situation and given you know one piece of kit or two pieces of kit, whatever. You know, and um, you know they're, they're asked to choose. You know, what is the most important piece of kit that you would take if you were in a survival situation? And you know, the truth is, actually, what you really want is a satellite phone because you know, in a, in a true survival situation, what you want more than anything else is for somebody to come and rescue you. In the jungle, at least, the most likely survival situation you might end up in is where you've got lost in the jungle. And, you know, what you want in your PSK or, you know, on you at that time is stuff that will help you, you know, not only fire water, etc., but help you communicate with, you know, uh, the search and rescue team should, it, you know, it end up with people having to come and find you, i.e. you can't self-rescue. And that's what I'm going to cover today. And what I thought I'd do is look at a real life example of, you know, somebody who, who got lost. Uh, they were in a group in the jungle. They got lost and, um, you know, unfortunately didn't survive. And try to show you some of the things that, you know, went wrong and that, you know, could have been done better. And some of the things that person could have done that would have uh, meant that the search and rescue team you know, would have been able to find him. So first of all, let me show you, you know, what I've got in my PSK and then, you know, as we go along, I'll show you, you know, how these things are used. I mean, a phone, I mean, as I was saying before, you know, if you're in a, in a really bad situation, what you want is to be able to get somebody to come and help you. If you've got phone reception, you've got a phone, you know, your problems, you know, are not necessarily totally over, but they're on their way to being over. Uh, let's assume there's no, uh, you know, phone reception. What have I got? The first thing is here, I've got all the things I need. Uh, you know, in terms of rescue, etc., very accessible. So, you know, the thing is, if you put things at the bottom of the pouch, you know, you're less likely to use them, uh, you know, straight away. You know, you're going to wait a bit longer. You know, and things like, you know, I've got like a, you know, whistle here. You know, you don't want to delay. If, you, if you've if you got separated from the group, you want to, you know, give you know, three short blasts on that, you know, and, and alert them to the fact that, you know, you've, you've got separated from them and then they can come find you. So you want it handy. Got a compass, you know, I mean, goes without saying. What else have I got? I've got a torch, you know, I mean, at night, signaling, you know, that's that's going to help a lot. And, also for, and for other reasons as well. I've got uh, this, what I've talked about before, a reflective buff. You know, it's, again, just makes you visible. You now, you know, if, you, if you've got lost and, you know, you want people to come and find you, it's all about... Um, leaving clues as to where you are and, and making yourself and your track as visible as possible. And then in here, I've got, I'll show you this later, I've got some uh, waterproof note paper, pencil, um, some, you know, uh, high-vis tape, and I'll show you, you know, how that's used and, you know, how useful that can be. In, in this other setup I've got, it's more or less the same thing. Um, where have we got? We've got, like, uh, got a whistle here. Um, I've got a torch in there, um, and in this pouch here, you know, I've got the same thing—a pencil, some some high visibility. Can't get it out. Some high visibility tape. Um, again, I'll show you what ha you know how how that could be used. And here, I've got this. Actually, I bought quite recently, and I'm quite pleased with it. Is a little silver compass. Let me show you that. And it's tiny, but uh, it's it's a really nice little compass. And you know, so far, you know, it's been pointing north, which is what you want it to want it to do. Okay, so let's go back to that example of a guy that got lost, um, you know, in the jungle, and he was coming down a hill with a group of people. And you know, it's the end of the day, and as usual, you know, at the end of the day, people are in a rush to get out because you know they want a warm shower, um, you know, go to the pub or whatever and he got separated from the group. One other thing to sorry, mention about the, you know, these items is you know, if you take the torch, they're all held by clips. So you know, there's no risk of it falling out of my pack. It's, you know, it's double secure, it's held you know, with, with this. It's all held with that clip and it's held with another clip as well. Same with the whistle and compass. You can see there, there's a, like a little clip to hold it on. The other thing in both of these kits is uh, I've got some you know, um, three-in-one to make a you know a hot drink, and I'll come back to that. This you know why that's important. Same here. You know you can see I've got like a little pouch and in there you know I've just got some Milo and some coffee.
Okay, I'm using chess pieces just to try and demonstrate this, but let's imagine this is our group heading down the hill to, you know, the car park, and they all want to go home. We've got the leader here. These guys are in, a, like, a bit of a rush. And this guy, a white pawn, he's, like, he's lagged behind a little bit. And, you know, let's assume they had a sweeper as well. I don't know the exact details, but let's say they had a sweeper here. The problem with this arrangement is because these guys have gone ahead, this guy can't see this guy. And let's assume instead of coming this way, which he should do, he goes, he, goes, he follows another trail, maybe an animal trail or something. So he's now gone the wrong way. The, the person behind him doesn't realize that he's gone there and he stays on the right trail, you know, as does the one person behind him and the sweeper. And they all go down to the car park. And, you know, what, it's only when they're there all, you know, sort of happy to have got out of the jungle, that they realise, you know, they've left somebody behind. So just let's, for a second, look at this from the perspective of the group, what the group did wrong, if you like. I mean, they had a sweeper, that's fine, but, you know, the problem was, you know, as I said, this, this guy's going to go off in the wrong direction. And what, what this group wasn't doing was uh, practising a, a sort of convoy discipline. And this is something I used to do when I was off-roading. And essentially what it means is this guy here is responsible for the person behind him, i.e. this person. He keeps that person in sight. And if the person behind him is out of sight, goes out of sight, he stops and waits. And the same for this one. So if he stops to wait, he will stop to wait. He will stop to wait and he will stop to wait. So the convoy, if you like, stops and waits for this guy to catch up. Now, if you assume he still went the wrong way, the convoy's waiting, this guy turns up and he realises, hang on, you know, where's the guy? You're not the guy that's meant to be behind me. And they realise that they've lost him. They realise very quickly that they've lost him. And then, you know, they can use a whistle or call out and find him. If you don't have convoy, uh, a convoy discipline, this guy can go off there and, as I say, you know, this guy's just going to keep going. Everybody just keeps going and they don't realise this guy's gone off in the wrong direction. OK, let's look at it now from the perspective of the guy who got lost. And instead of going this way, you know, which is the way the group went, he went off on a branch trail and at a certain point he's going to realise he's gone the wrong way, that he's lost the group. And, you know, maybe he tried to backtrack uh, you know, we don't know exactly what happened to this guy because they never found him, they never found his body, you know, I mean, he just vanished in the jungle. Um, but, let, you know, even if he backtracks, you know, by now, you know, he's disorientated, he's probably panicking a bit, he may get even more lost, he may start going this way. You know, we just don't know. The only thing that, they, that, we, that we know about this guy in the real um, life scenario was, uh, you know, that they found, the Orang Asi went in to look for him the next day and found where he'd spent the night, where he'd camped. But after that, they couldn't track him because, you know, the truth is, you know, these sort of Hollywood films where people track people through the jungle, you know, you can forget it. Unless somebody is trailblazing and leaving a trail, the jungle is just too much, too full of interference and clutter, uh, you know, for it to be easy to track somebody. So, you know, that's a key thing. You know, when you get lost, um, well, we'll talk about, well, now what we'll do is we'll talk about what this guy should have done and what items in your PSK are going to really help you um, make sure that a search and rescue team can find you. So what should our guy have done when he realised that he got uh, lost or separated from the group? And, you know, the, the first thing is just to call out, Oi! You know, shout, see if anybody replies. I mean, it's basic, but do it. If nobody replies, you know, use your whistle. You know, three short blasts on the whistle. You know, that's your sort of distress call, if you like. If nobody replies then, you know that you're, you know, quite far from the group. And then the most important thing to do is, is stop. And stop is used as an acronym for people to remember. Stop, think, uh, orientate and plan. The problem, if you like, with the whole sort of stop theory is that most people, and I'm probably the same, you know, will stop for like five seconds and go, oh, you know, I've, I've gone the wrong way, I'm going to backtrack. And... You know, that's a sort of a snap decision, and it's, it's not one that's been thought out well. Your state of mind is, like, agitated. Stop really means that. It means stop. You know, get, you know, calm yourself down and, you know, really think about what's happened and what is the best thing to do next. But how do you make yourself do that? And, you know, a friend of mine uh, called Stuart Goring wrote a very interesting article. I'll put a link on the website. And his theory was, you know, that survival, in those sort of situations anyway, is all about a good cup of tea. And uh, I'll show you, what, show you what, what, he mean, what he meant by that. 
So Stuart's idea, and you know, I mean, I, you, you can't but agree with it, is that you know, because you know, when you're lost, you, you're sort of agitated, you, you know, you, you're worried, um, you're, in, you're in a sense not likely to do the right thing. And if you stop like this and just make a small fire, you know, you've got to collect some kindling and what have you. Um, what that does is it, it, it gives you something to do, which takes your mind off the sort of panic it's feeling. And, you know, uh, you make a nice cup of tea. Again, that's going to sort of calm you down. And it forces you to stay in one place. And the fact is, if that guy in our scenario, uh, you know, had done this, um, they'd have found him, as long as he'd stayed in the same place. The other, I mean, the thing about fires, you know, which is, you know, a, a, another benefit is that you can smell the smoke from quite a long way away in the jungle. So it's, it's going to give people an idea of where you are. So, you know, that's another advantage. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a, have a cup of tea, got my Stanley flask. Stick it on and, you know, think about, you know, what, what I'm going to do next. Okay, so my water's boiled, um, and in my pouch here at the back, I've got coffee and Milo. So get that out. Yeah, I have Milo. Um, and I'm feeling a bit more relaxed, you know, so we're just going to stick that in. So the idea, you know, that was a sort of PSK item that perhaps people don't necessarily think of, is, you know, to bring some tea or coffee or something for exactly this reason that, you know, you can stop, make a fire, make a hot drink, sort of relax, meantime think about you know what is the right thing to do next the other consideration you're going to have in these sort of situations is the should i stay or should i go um question and you know it comes down to this really it's going to depend on the on the circumstance in the in the case that we were talking about earlier you know he should definitely have stayed put they would have found him but you know it depends does anybody know where you are were you with a group were you on your own you know um so, I mean, generally, I would say, you know, as long as you think somebody might come and find you, stay put, get a fire going, you know, hopefully they'll find you sooner rather than later. However, you know, there may be a scenario where you can't stay put. And, you know, that would be, you know, if you think it's going to take longer for somebody to come and find you and you need water. And that's going to be the key thing in the jungle because, uh, you know, it's hot, you're going to get dehydrated. So you might, you know, you, you might be lost somewhere where there is no water and you need to go and find water. And that's the, the next um, scenario I want to talk about. So if we know we're going to have to leave to look for water, say, the key thing now is to leave a trail so that somebody going to that, your last known location, uh, should they find that trace of your fire or your trail, they can follow it and find you. And the key thing, it's all about communication. Now, this is what I've got in my PSK, is like some waterproof paper, this high visibility tape, uh, you know, this stuff which is, you know, you can use to hang from trees to mark your trail. And where the fire is, you know, you can, you can leave a note, basically, because people might find the fire. And before you leave this spot, I know you shouldn't do this normally, but in a survival situation you would, you could build the fire up. So, you know, put some heavy logs on it so it'll just keep smouldering away. Because, as I say, the smoke travels. So, you know, you can make, you could get a note like this, hang it from a tree or, you know, put it on a post like this in the ground next to the fire and on it you, you're going to explain what's going on so you know here i've got help you know let's not beat around the bush i am lost you know i'm going to head east uh, to look for water and then if i find a river i'm going to follow it downstream so they know where i'm going then you want to put the date the time your name and phone numbers you know because you know you may, you may not come back here you may have got you know, you may have self-rescued, you've left a note like that, you don't want to alarm people necessarily. There's a phone number they can ring and check to see whether you got out of the jungle all right or not. So something like that, you know, makes a huge difference. And um, I'll just show you, I've got, I've made one up in my pocket here. All you need, I mean, it's tiny, just a, a little package like this. Um, and inside, I've got this, this high visibility tape, the, the other tape, some waterproof paper and uh, here there's oh, I can't get it out there's a, like a pencil so that you know allows me to communicate with potential search and rescue people who you know are going to you know find at least where I was if not where I am right now if you don't have a, a notepad and paper 
I mean, you know, there are other things you could use. I mean, the, where are they? These bamboo sheaths. I mean, you can write on those, um, you know, with a pencil. Yeah, you don't need a space pen, pencil's gonna do fine, but you could write on that, uh, you know, in the same way. Or, you know, you can make arrows on the ground using stones, you know, a pointer, or, you know, you can use um, palm leaves the same way to make a sort of arrow shape and, and uh, make a cut in a tree and put it into a tree. You know, you trailblaze, you know, the, if, if you haven't got anything to mark your trail, like plastic or whatever, you know, as you go along, you're going to cut the trees, you know, make little slash marks in the trees. I've covered that before. All of which is basically to communicate to anybody who's trying to find you where you have gone. That is the key thing. Anyway, I mean, as I say, you know, you don't need much to really improve your chances of uh, someone being able to find you in the jungle. Uh, it just requires, a, you know, cl a clear and calm frame of mind. And, you know, just to finish off, I mean, a lot of people get into trouble, get lost in the jungle because they're too, they're, they're too shy to, or they're not shy, they, they don't want to admit they've got lost, you know. They, so rather than ask for help or whistle or do all this sort of stuff, they just sort of blindly, you know, carry on hoping that they're going to find their way out because otherwise they're worried that people are going to laugh at them. And, you know, let me tell you this, everybody I know who's been in the jungle for long periods of time has got lost at some point. I've been lost in the jungle. I know at some point in the future, you know, I'll get lost again. It's just, you know, it's just the way it is. It's, it's what you do next that's important. All the Arang Asli I talk to, you know, I always ask them, have you ever been lost in the jungle? Every single one of them has, that I've spoken to anyway has at some point been lost in the jungle. So it's nothing to be ashamed of. The key thing is you know, keep that calm state of mind and make sure that you might think you're going to self-rescue, but if you can't and you, you get even more lost, you want to have left a sort of breadcrumb trail, you know, so that people can find you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.